morning students in the previous class we have seen the first part of the play one act play a sunny morning we have been introduced to two characters donna laura an old woman of 70 and her maid petra now we will continue the chapter so we stopped when petra has left the stage and donna laura is sitting on the bench on a sunny morning in autumn season in a park in madrid and she has been feeding some pigeons with the bread crumbs now bread crumbs just means pieces of bread so she has brought bread crumbs with her and she has thrown it on the ground and as soon as she did that pigeons came down and they were pecking at the bread crumbs this is where we have stopped now let us continue enter don gonzalo and panito from left so as she was feeding the bread crumbs the other two characters enter the stage from the left side don gonzalo and juanito enter Don Gonzalo is an old gentleman of 70, gouty and impatient. Now, he is also an old man. Gonzalo is also an old man in his 70s. And just a look at him, we can understand that he is impatient, so restless. The appearance on his face will tell us that he is so restless. He is not just as refined as Donna Laura and he is gouty. Gouty is nothing but uh, you know gout is a kind of arthritis you'll have pain in joints so you can imagine naturally when you have pain in joints you would find difficulty to walk so this man has that problem a uh, painful joints so he comes he leans upon vanito's arm and drags his feet some walk as he walks now as he enters Just as Laura has entered, his one arm is on the shoulders of Juanito, his servant. And as he walks, the other foot he is just dragging. He can't stamp his feet properly on the ground. He is just dragging them as he is walking. So as he enters, Gonzalo says, "I think they are time away. They should be saying mass." So this is the first dialogue that he says. He speaks about someone, and. from the speech we understand that he has not like their activity somebody is sitting and wasting their time he says idling means wasting and he also refers to them saying they should have been saying mass mass refers to the prayer they should have been praying at this time but the sit and waste their time and he just compare it with the dialogue that uh, donna laura has said she says i am glad to be here what a beautiful morning and in contrast don gonzalo says i think that time away he is trying to find fault with somebody at the park rather than enjoying the beautiful morning now quanto says see though the spelling is j u a n i t o you pronounce it as quanto so quanto says you can sit here senor as i told you senor means sir sir you please sit here there is only a lady donna laura turns her head and listens so he points out to the bench where donna laura is sitting and he says sir you can sit here you don't look around please take your seat don gonzalo i want vanito i want a bench to myself no i am not ready to sit here I want a bench for myself. I am not ready to sit near this lady. But there is none. So what it is is there is no bench around. This is the only vacant bench. That one over there is mine. So he immediately points out and says, "You know that bench over there? That is my bench. Whenever I come to this park, I occupy that bench. That's mine. I want that." There are three priests sitting there. So immediately his servant says you know there are three priests over there so now you just relate his first dialogue idling their time away they should be saying mass so that is a reference to the 
three priests sitting on his bench. He says that is his bench. Though it is a park, he says his bench. So uh, this is a reference to the three priests. Instead of sitting there and speaking, they should have been praying there in the church. This is what he says. And Gonzalo, rout them out. Have they gone? And he's so impatient that he says, Juanito, ask them to go away. Rout them out means send them away. Send them away. They should not sit here. And then he's immediately asking, have they gone? Can you see? Are they still there? No, indeed. They are talking. So Juanito says, they have not gone. They are talking, sitting over there. Just as if they were glued to the seat. No hope of their leaving. Come this way, Juanito. And then he makes a comment. He should not have said that about those priests because it's a public park. Anybody can come. Anybody can sit. Anybody can enjoy the beautiful weather around. Instead, he says, just as if they were glued to the seat. It's almost as if they are tied to the seat. And he says, I don't think they are going to get up. Let's go. Let's search for another seat, he says. He's calling Juanito to accompany him as he walks. They walk towards the birds, right, and they are moving on to the right side. They enter from the left and they are moving to the right side where Laura has been feeding the birds. The birds had been you know, taking the bread crumbs. Donna Laura indignantly, indignantly means angrily, look out. You know, Donna Laura appeared so refined. So we can understand the dialogue of Don Gonzalo might definitely have hurt her because he refused to sit near her for one days. And as he is walking towards the birds, naturally when somebody walks, the birds would fly away. So you would be disturbing them. So she says, look out. Are you speaking to me, Senora? So immediately Gonzalo asks, is that to me? Am I supposed to look out? Yes, to you. What do you wish? Gonzalo says, you have scared away the birds who are feeding on my crumbs. So he says, what have you done? The birds have been so comfortably feeding on the bread crumbs. And with all this noise, now they have flown away. So you have scared away the birds. What do I care about the birds? Gonzalo is wondering, why is this lady yelling out at him? He says, should I care about the birds? The bark is not for birds, the bark is for human beings. So why should I bother? But I do. So Laura says, you may not bother, but I have concern because I have been feeding them. This is a public park. So he says, this is a public park. I'll come, I'll search for a seat, I'll walk, I may scare away the birds. There's nobody to question it. Laura, then why do you complain that the priests have taken your bench? So, she is just giving him the exact reply. She is asking, you said this is public park. And sometime before, what did you say? You were complaining that the priests have taken your bench. Public park, they can very well sit anywhere they want. So, how come it is your bench? Senora, we have not met. Gonzalo did not like the way she questioned him. So he says, Senora, Madam, I will tell you, we have not met. What is it mean? We are strangers. I don't know you, you don't know me. We are meeting for the first time. And how can you question me? If it was my friend, I would have accepted it. We are complete strangers. So I say, I don't want to have a conversation with you. I cannot imagine why you take the liberty of addressing me. And now Gonzalo says, you know, ladies should be refined in character. They are not supposed to speak like this to strange men. So I don't understand why you are taking all the liberty. Liberty means freedom. Why do you take the freedom of speaking to me like this? Come, Juanito, both go out right. He calls his servant and both of them go out. Actually, he had come there, he couldn't find his seat. His seat was occupied by three priests. And then he had a conversation with Donna Laura. She was questioning him because he scared away the birds that were feeding on her breadcrumbs. Now, both of them go out. 
uh, searching for another seat. Now, Laura speaks. What an ill-natured old man. So as soon as Gonzalo left, she says, what an ill-natured man he is. He is an old man who does not have manners. Why do you think this lady is complaining that he does not have manners? See, there could be several reasons. He has really hurt her feelings. He says, I want a bench for myself and I will not sit near the lady. And moreover, he scared away her birds as well. And then he justified it saying that that is a public park. So definitely, she says that he does not have manners. Why must people get so fussy and cross when they reach a certain age? So fussy means cranky, cross, angry. So she is wondering, see when people become old, why should they behave like this? Why should they create all this fuss? Why should they be angry? This man was almost yelling at me. Why should people be like that? Looking toward right. I am glad. And again, she has forgotten that she also was fussy and cross with him. That she forgets. Definitely, we always you know, forget our mistakes when we highlight others' mistakes. Probably, we also do the same mistakes, uh, but we just conveniently forget them. So, she is uh, trying to reflect on this fact. She is just trying to say that he is so cross, so angry, and he is not well behaved, well, he does not have manners. I am with all these qualities. So now, uh, looking at him, she is just observing the way he walks. He has gone and says, I am glad he lost that bench too. Serves him right for scaring the birds. So, she has watched him going out. The man was walking in the park trying to find a seat. And there was an empty bench. He goes there. But by the time he reaches, Somebody else has already occupied it. So she watches all these things and then she says, he lost that bench too. She's so happy that he did not get that bench. You just observe the character, just like children. So Laura is like a child. She's so happy that this old man does not get a place to sit. So she says, this is the punishment for him. What for? Because he has scared away my birds. He is furious. And look at his face. He is so angry. Yes, yes. Find a seat if you can. And she is challenging. You know, all these things she is speaking to herself. She is saying, find a seat if you can. You will not get a seat. I know you will finally come here. So, poor man. He is wiping the perspiration from his face. Look at him. Sunny morning. He has walked a lot and all. He has a lot of problem in walking as well. And he is wiping out, he has taken a kerchief and perspiration means sweat. He is just wiping out all the sweat. I understand that but I am happy. Here he comes. A carriage would not raise more dust than his feet. Enter Don Gonzalo and Anito on my right and walk toward left. So the man has gone. He has searched everywhere in the park. He did not get a seat. The priests are still there and he comes back now. And uh, Laura is watching him walking back towards her. And looking at him, she says, You know, a carriage would not raise more dust. See, as he walks, uh, he is dragging his feet. And when you drag your feet, naturally dust will come up. She says, How much dust? As he walks, even if a carriage is going, a horse carriage goes, it, it will not raise this much of dust, she said. She's trying to find fault with this man. Each and every small thing, act that he does, she's trying to find a fault with that. Because she's so angry on him. Now, Gonzalo, after reaching, have the priest gone yet, Panito? He's asking the servant, are the priests still there? Have they gone? No, indeed, senor. They are still there. So Panito says, Senor, they have not gone. They are still sitting. Gonzalo, the authority should place more benches here for these sunny mornings. Again, a complaint from him. He had a lot of complaints. As soon as he enters the park, he has started giving complaints one after the other. So the next thing is that authorities, the park authorities, what are they doing? They know that old people would come on Sunday mornings. Why don't they place a few more benches? Well, I suppose I must resign myself and sit on the bench with the old lady. 
So now, in a low voice, he says, Now I don't have any choice. I must resign. I must take crest. I have to take a decision now. I can't walk anymore. Probably I'll have to sit with her. There is no other way. Already he had a verbal combat. Muttering to himself, he sits at the extreme end of Donna Laura's bench and looks at her indignantly, touches his heart as he greets her. Good morning. So, he takes the bench, he takes his place at the extreme corner of the bench. He sits there. And as he is sitting, he is casting glances at Laura. Not happy glances. He is still angry because she has questioned him. So, angrily, he looks at her. And again, he is a gentleman. So, there should be certain gentlemanly qualities that others would expect of him. So, he just touches that. So, usually you have to take your hat off and you have to bow in order to show respect. But he doesn't do it, just touches his hand. Just to show that, yes, I have greeted you. And then he says, good morning. Not a very good beginning, Laura. What? You here again? So, Laura has observed him coming back. Now, when he sat at the corner of the bench, greeting her, she says, how come you are here? You only said that you want a bench for yourself. And now, how come you are here? I repeat that we have not met. So Gonzalo is in no mood to speak to her and uh, he is angry uh, with her, with all people around because he has lost his bench, the usual bench where he sits. So now he says, I told you lady, we have not met. We are strangers. I don't know you. I don't want to have a conversation with you. I was responding to your salute. So Laura says, no, I did not say you saluted me. You greeted me first. That's my response. You began it, Gonzalo. Good morning should be answered by good morning. And that is all you should have said. So he said, what did I say? I said, good morning. That was my greeting. You should have said just good morning. You should have asked permission to sit on this bench, which is mine. So immediately she says, you know, this is my bench. Did you take permission to sit near me? No. So you should have taken permission. That should have been the cordial thing. You didn't do. So that's why you responded in that way. The bench is your or public property. So Gonzalo says, I won't take permission from anybody. This is a public park, public bench. I'll sit wherever I want. Why? You said the one the priests have was yours. But what did you say some time earlier? You said... The bench where the three priests are sitting and chatting, that bench belongs to you. If that bench is yours, this bench is mine. That's it. Very well, very well. I have nothing more to say. He just says, I don't have anything more to say. Stop here. Between his teeth. So biting his teeth. He is so angry but doesn't want to speak because if he speaks one sentence, he will speak two sentences. So he does not want to spoil his mood. Already the mood is spoiled. He doesn't want more because they all come to the park to sit and relax. So between his teeth, biting the teeth, he just gives out all his uh, feelings. Senile old lady. Senai means degenerated, one who does not think in a proper way. Old lady is not at all having a good uh, um, thought, he says. She ought to be at home knitting and counting her beads. And then he also assigns her work. You remember he has assigned the work for priests. What was the work assigned to the priest? Say the mass. And now he says, this old lady, why is she here? She should have sat at home. She could have done two things. Knitting. Knitting is nothing but, uh, you know, uh, making sweaters and such things using uh, yarn. So she could have sat at home knitting a sweater for her children or grandchildren or counting her beads. Counting her beads is a reference to the prayer. She could have sat at home and prayed because she is an old woman. Why is she supposed to be here? And he conveniently forgets that he too is very old. He also could have done the same thing sitting at home. And again all this in a whisper to himself he says, Laura. Don't grumble anymore. I'm not going to leave just to please you. So Laura immediately says, no point in grumbling. Whatever you say, I will not leave this place. I will sit here. Because she knows very well, he wants a bench all for himself. I'm not ready to give you. Gonzalo, 
brushing the dust from his shoes with his handkerchief. He takes the handkerchief. You remember as he was walking back, he was wiping out his sweat using the handkerchief. So using the same handkerchief, he is just dusting the uh, shoes. Because as he walked, a lot of dust has accumulated on that. If the ground was sprinkled a little, it would be an improvement. Another complaint. Authorities are not sprinkling water. If they had sprinkled water, that would not have come. It would have been a little improvement, he says, again, to himself. Do you use your handkerchief as a shoe brush? So, Laura notices this. She doesn't have anything else to do. The birds have already gone away. So, now she is observing each and every movement of this man and says, Are you using your handkerchief to brush your shoes? Do you use this often? Why not? So, Gonzalo is so angry with her. He says, Yes, I would use. Do you use a shoe brush as a handkerchief? So, the next question is, In that case, do you do vice versa? Do you take your shoe brush and, you know, wipe your face? Do you use like that? What right have you to criticize my actions? So he's so angry and he says, See, lady, why are you questioning me? You don't have any right to criticize my actions. My shoes, my handkerchief, and I am doing it on my own. I am not disturbing you, so you don't have any right to speak to me like that. A neighbor's right. So Laura says, yes, I have a right. I am sitting next to you. And I see all these awful things. So I have the neighbor's right. Quanto, my book. I do not care to listen to nonsense. So immediately he stops talking to her and he says, Juanito, please give me the book. Let me read. I don't want to listen to this nonsense. This lady sitting over here is speaking nonsense. I don't want to listen to it and waste my time. So give me the book. You're very polite. So immediately Laura understood what he meant. And says, see, you are addressing a lady in this way. You say that I am speaking nonsense. So polite of you. So good of you. She's so sarcastic in her command. Gonzalo. Pardon me, senora. But never interfere with what does not concern you. Senora, madam, I said. I have repeated. We are strangers. We have not met. And this is none of your business. Please don't interfere with what I do. I generally say what I think. So Laura is so generous when she says, you know, this is what came to my mind. I just said, that's it. This is my behavior. I can't do anything regarding it. Gonzalo. And more to the same effect. So your behavior and your thoughts all the same. Give me the book, Juanito. So again, he is putting an end to the conversation, asking for the book. Yo, senor, Juanito says. Juanito takes a book from his pocket. Hands it to Don Gonzalo, then exits by right. Again, this old man has to be left for himself for some time. So the servant takes a small book, hands it over to his master and he just leaves. So now on the bench you would find uh, this old man and the old woman sitting. Don Gonzalo, casting indignant glances at Donna Laura, puts on an enormous pair of glasses, takes from his pocket a reading glass, edges both to suit him and opens his book. Now, Lara is observing him all the while. All the while he is looking at her with an angry face. Then, he opens the book. Before opening the book, he takes the spectacles. He keeps it on. It has got very thick glass. Just like the glass of a soda you know, bottle. He has kept it. He has put it on. And probably he has got very poor eyesight. So, he has also taken another reading glass. A magnifying glass he has. So he holds the book, he opens and holds the book like this. He keeps the reading glass in between because the reading glass or the magnifying glass will once magnify it and then with his spectacles he can read. So he is just adjusting the book in order to read. He is adjusting all these things to read. So dear children, we have already seen uh, the introduction of Don Gonzalo to Donna Laura. Two old people in their 70s having their own eccentricities, having their own problems coming to the park and Gonzalo is uh, you know, not quite happy to sit near this old lady Donna Laura. Since he could not find any other seat, he comes back and he takes his place on one side of the bench.
So the conversation is not a happy one at the beginning. They keep fighting using their words. And every time uh, Laura pokes her nose into each and every small thing that uh, Gonzalo is doing. So right now, let us stop here. In the next class, we will see how their conversation is carried on and how peace is made between these two old people. Thank you.